Hey everyone and welcome to a YouTube video where we are starting to showcase some of Pico CTF or Pico Capture the Flag. Uh, Pico CTF is a beginner friendly game, kind of more aimed and targeted towards middle school students or high school students, but that doesn't mean that anyone at any age can play. It actually gets kind of tough as you kind of move forward, but the whole point is that it's for learning, it's for fun, and as I mentioned, it is a beginner friendly game, so throughout this series I'm kind of going to take the approach that, hey, you as the person watching, you as the audience, you're a beginner, you're new in cybersecurity, you kind of want to just learn and get your feet wet and expose yourself to as much as you can. So that is the mentality that I'm going to take. And uh, let's dive in to Pico CTF. I'll try and make this as beginner friendly as I can as we get started here. So I have opened up my web browser. I'm running Windows in this video and I'm using Google Chrome as my web browser. So hopefully that's the same that everyone else might be using. And uh, I'll go to picoctf.com over in the address bar and it will redirect me to picoctf.org. So that is the website we'll be going to to jump in here. Uh, we will need to go ahead and sign up if we'd like to play, but that's the whole point. We do want to play. Pico CTF is all about learning through exploration. Again, it says, hey, aim for middle school and high school students, but really that means this is very beginner friendly. This is something that anyone can kind of jump in and get started in. Pico CTF is excellent. They do this every single year. Um, it's a normally, I think, a week or two week long competition, but then the challenges, the infrastructure, everything that you want to play and tinker with is still accessible and available and online. So anyone at any point Point, can jump in and learn and play. It's totally free and it's a computer security game. All about learning, all about practicing. And uh, when the game is on, then hey, there are some prizes available to you. But right now we're kind of in the, hey, after the game, we just want to learn and have some fun. Pico Gym is their platform where now that the game is over, all the challenges that have been released, we can access through Pico Gym. Um, Pico Gym does include some challenges from previous years. Right now, I want to focus on Pico CTF 2021, but for other videos you might be able to find on my channel that do showcase different challenges from Pico CTF. So, as I mentioned, the game previously ran from March 16th to March 30th in 2021, but uh, hey, we're just here to have some fun anyway, so let's go ahead and log in or sign up. Uh, if you did want to sign up, you would need to enter your username, whatever you'd like. I'll be a lead Haxor, and uh, it has to start with a letter only containing letters and numbers. Dude, that's kind of lame. We'll just do a John Hammond, uh, please sub. I guess. Enter your age group and then an email that you'll be able to go ahead and receive whatever thing at and then the password that you'd like to specify. I do recommend using a password manager. Right now I'm using LastPass, but you can use whatever you'd like. Fill out that CAPTCHA and then you'll have to validate your email, but I am logged in already as this John Hammond YT or John Hammond YouTube. So if we were to log in, it'll bring us into Pico Gym right? So the Pico Gym interface is super nice. It's pretty easy to understand. In the middle here, there are all these challenges that we would want to tinker with and explore and play. But over on the left, we can filter out what challenges are displayed. We could get into a specific category of a capture the flag. In a Jeopardy style game like this one, there could be different categories like web exploitation or cryptography or reverse engineering, forensics, etc, etc. Um, again, the appearance notion here is when that challenge was released in Capture the Flag for Pico in their series. Uh, again, I want to focus on Pico CTF 2021, so I'm going to simply click on that here. Good enough. Now, everything that's displayed in these tiles of cards here for the challenges, they are specific to the Pico CTF 2021 game. So we'll get started. We'll dive into the very, very first challenge, which is in the general skills category for five points that currently has 10,488 solved. So we're a little late to the punch here, but hey, better late than never. 82% uh, of people liked it. And the challenge is called Obedient Cat. So if we click on that card, It'll bring down this little modal dialog box that just displays this challenge here. We can see the author or who wrote it, and this would be good to know so you could ask for support if you want to jump into their Discord server or reach out um, and maybe, hey, I, I think a challenge is broken or I need a hint or I need something. Um, that is very, very common in, in Capture the Flag and in the, in the scene. So uh, reach out 
and don't hesitate to be a part of the community if they have a Discord server or something open for players and people to communicate. The description here says this file has a flag in plain sight, also known as in the clear, and we can download the file or download the flag right here. There are hints accessible and available to us. Uh, I will always tell folks there is no shame in taking hints, especially if you're trying to learn, and that's what this is all about, right? We're all about learning here, so don't worry about taking hints. You, you just, you want to get exposure, you want to learn. So if you're banging your head against the wall, if you're beating yourself up because you can't solve a challenge or a task that's in front of you, that's okay. Hey, maybe reach out and don't be, don't be beating yourself up for a week or a day, whatever. However much your attention span can hold, uh, it, go for the hint. There's, there's no shame in that. Uh, if we want to, we can kind of jump in here. Uh, it says, any hints about entering a command in the terminal, such as the next one, will start with a dollar sign. Everything after the dollar sign will be typed or copy and paste it into your terminal. Okay. And then to get the file accessible in your shell, enter the following in the terminal prompt. Wget, and this link here is displayed with a long path. And you could use man cat. Okay, so those are commands that we could run. Before we dive into using the terminal, I kind of want to showcase this in the Windows sense um, because I'm understanding that a lot of you newcomers, a lot of the beginners might be just not spun up in Linux yet. And we'll get into that super duper soon because Linux is absolutely essential. It is vital to doing cybersecurity work or playing capture the flag. But for now, we're taking this super slow. We're taking this easy. We're uh, going beginner friendly here. So if I were to download this flag file, you can see now down below it has created this flag and that will pop into my downloads folder on my computer. I'm gonna click that arrow to show in folder so it'll bring up this downloads page. And uh, now you can see I have this flag file. Problem is it seemingly doesn't have a file extension. Windows doesn't know what it is. It's not a text file. It's not an executable file like a program or a binary that could run. It's not a zip file. It's not a JPEG or an image, a PNG, anything. What is it? Windows, the operating system that you might be using right now, relies on that file extension to really know what the file is and how to associate different programs with it. So if I were to double click on this flag file, it's like, uh, <laughs> what do you want to do with this? How do you want to open this file? Now, no matter what this file is, if it's a video, if it's an image, if it's a zip archive, if it's a binary executable or a program, if we were to try and open this up in like notepad, we'd see a lot of non-printable characters or like random gibberish, lots of nonsense, technical jargon and stuff that maybe we don't make the most sense out of. But the characters in that file that are plain text, that are like an English character, like A, B, C, D, or numbers zero through nine, uh, those will be visible because they'll still be in that file. So even if this were a binary file, we could still kind of take a look at it inside of something like Notepad or a text editor, right? So Notepad is a common text editor that is installed by default, right, on your Windows computer. So if I were to simply double click or open up Notepad, we can see this flag here that's displayed. And this flag is in a standard flag format, which is super important when you're playing capture the flag or you're doing these, these cybersecurity tasks and activities and exercises because the flag format tells you, hey, this is what you're looking for. This is the key, this is the token, this is the proof that says you've completed this task or this challenge. Now. It's hard if a game doesn't have a standard flag format because you don't know what you're looking for. If you were to go through a huge amount of files, a big file system, and you're drilling down into each specific directory or folder, you don't know what you're really looking for because it could be a random word, it could be a series of numbers, it could be a birthday, it could be anything, right? So it is important for Capture the Flag games to use a standard flag format, and thankfully, Pico CTF does that. The flag format is Pico CTF with curly braces kind of beginning and ending. And inside of those curly braces is some sort of string or message. Um, in this case, it's a little leet speak, right? Hey, sanity verified. 
and some hex or numbers and letters at the very, very end going from 0 through 9 and A through F. We can talk about hex later if you aren't familiar with it, but right now we have a flag and we can submit that for points. We can submit that to solve that challenge. And that's the whole point of Capture the Flag, solving as many challenges as you can, learning and having fun all along the way. So this is super simple, right? This was very, very beginner. This is uh, opening up this file and it just gave us the flag right away. We kind of had to know or at least decipher how we could open this thing. In Windows, it's not going to explicitly tell us the extension in this case, so we don't know exactly what to open that up with. But we tried Notepad and now if we were to paste that in, Hooray, we've earned five points. That challenge card is grayed out because we have completed it. And you can see a little checkbox right beside that little person icon there. So that is that. But we did that in Windows. And we didn't exactly know what that file extension was. And all those hints that we were looking at, they kept trying to tell us about some commands to enter into a terminal or in the command line, right? All those words and things we, we would enter. Um... Can we do some of that? I'm going to grab this wget command. It's wget syntax. wget is a command in Linux, which is what we'll jump into when we go into that terminal. Linux being completely different operating system, its own distribution stuff, separate from Windows. And we can access it all inside of the browser, inside of Pico CTF in the Pico gym. Sure, later on we'll set up a virtual machine and we'll really get our hands dirty in Linux. But for now, let's kind of press the I believe button and let's enter these commands. Again, everything following that dollar sign prompt that they mentioned that hint number one here. So let's grab, select everything for wget. And I'll right click and copy that. And over in this icon over here, there's a web shell button. This web shell button, if I click on that, brings us into a Pico CTF web shell. So I'll zoom in on this and it needs to know my Pico CTF username, which is John Hammond YT. It needs to be my password also. So let me go ahead and grab that. Um, I am again using LastPass. So I will copy that password and paste it in. See if it allows me in. All right, it does. And now I'm just going to have to go ahead and grab that wget syntax one more time. Uh, I'll pop this out. And you can see there's this little pop out icon here. Oh, and I'm going to have to enter my username all over again. Paste in my password. There we go. Now I'm logged in. I hit control L on my keyboard. Control L let me clear the screen. Or I could simply type in the word clear and hit enter. Nice. You can hit enter to get new lines of prompt in the command line in the terminal that we're in or the web shell. But we want to go ahead and copy this wget command in so we can download something. This command line, this command utility, that will allow us to download from a website. So we'll pass in that HTTPS URL as an argument just following that wget command, the space here to kind of denote it's another argument or parameter. Now, if I were to hit enter, there's a lot of stuff that comes down on our screen, but we can see, oh, it actually were to resolve that website, mercury.picoctf.net. It connects to it. It sends a request, downloads and saves to a flag file. But where did this flag file go inside of the web shell, inside of our kind of Linux terminal right now, right? Well, wget will by default with normal operation drop it in our current directory now when i say current directory i mean where you are in your file system in linux now we talk about file systems in windows right there's the c colon and backslashes to get to like c users your username and then your desktop or your documents in linux you have all the same stuff but it's kind of named differently. Um, you can see in this prompt here with a dollar sign prompt, uh, my username, John Hammond, YT at Pico CTF at the web shell, colon tilde dollar sign. Now that dollar sign is the prompt, right? That's telling me, hey, dollar sign is kind of reserved for a normal user, like an administrator user, like the super user, they would have a hashtag or a little octothorpe, the pound symbol, right? To denote that they are the admin. 
we're just <laughs> we're just a plebe, right? We're a regular user. I'm just John Hammond over here in the web shell. Uh, but the current directory is actually noted by this tilde, by that squiggly line. The tilde refers to our home directory in Linux. So the home directory in Linux is actually going to be forward slash home forward slash your username. Now, if you parallel that to Windows, Windows, we had C colon backslash users, your username. It's a little bit different. So that C colon backslash, that's going to be represented by a forward slash in Linux, meaning the root of the file system or the beginning start of that tree in the file system. So if I were to actually enter PWD for present working directory, or print working directory, however you want to think about it. That command, as I hit enter, told me I'm in forward slash home, forward slash John Hammond YT, Pico CTF. So that's my user, right? If I were to type in who am I, that's exactly what it is. That's my user, John Hammond YouTube at Pico CTF. Now, in this current directory, we know our flag file is there, but how do we see it? How do we get to it? How do we validate that wget, that command actually downloaded this file? Well, we probably want to list stuff kind of in our directory, right? If we were using the Windows Explorer, like kind of we were in our downloads folder, we'd be able to see it right there inside that folder. Well, we can do the very same thing in Linux in the command line by typing in ls. I think of this as like list stuff, <laughs> but you can think of it however way you want. So in the current directory, wherever you are, in the command line, in that path, your tilde right there. I'll hit enter. Ooh. And I have a readme.txt and a flag. The readme.txt, mm, that file might come from the banner that was displayed as we logged in. We can kind of verify that later. But for now, I want to focus on this flag file because that is, in fact, what we want to be able to see, right, and read and know the value and contents of. Well, the other hint back in the Pico CTF gym here, it told us to run man cat, <laughs> which sounds really weird, right? Man cat. But man is a command to look for a manual or manual pages, right? To read the book, to take a look at the textbook as to how a command might work, right? So you would pass in an argument or a space just following it to say, whatever you want to look up. And that argument, the parameter is what you supply following that space. So we want to look up the cat command. We could look up man pwd, because we ran pwd just a moment ago, and it tells us, hey, that prints the name of the current working directory. Nice. That put us in the man page, but if I were to use my arrow keys to move up and down, left and right, if we really wanted to, <laughs> uh, Q will let us quit. So I just hit Q on my keyboard there. Now, if we were to man cat, like that hint told us, it says, oh, this will concatenate files and print on standard output. Oh, so print, it'll it'll just display it out, right? What does that concatenate word mean though? That's, that's weird. Uh, cat, this program, this command can take multiple arguments, right? So we could display both the flag file and that readme.txt file, if we wanted to, we could just supply them again, separated by spaces. But we just want to display out the value of that flag. So let's use that cat command, a space to denote a new argument or parameter, and the file name that we want to display out onto the terminal, on standard output. Again, running ls, we know that we have a flag file here in our current directory. So if I am not supplying a path or an absolute path, right? We don't have to type in going all the way from the root of the file system, slash home, slash John Hammond, U YT, slash Pico CTF, forward slash. We don't have to do all that because it'll know it's not an absolute path. We're going to look for a relative path. So the flag file or any file relative to where we are right now in the file system. When we ran PWD, we're in that tilde or the symbol for our home directory. So if I were to hit enter here, nice and easy, we'll just cat the flag. And now we can see just that content as we saw in notepad. Pico CTF sanity verified. Nice. That's it. 
Now in Windows, I open this up with Notepad. Um, Personally, I really like the text editor Sublime Text. I know some folks really like Visual Studio Code. I know some Linux guys really like Vim or Nano or Emacs, whatever, whatever you know, floats your boat, whatever text editor you enjoy, you're more than welcome to use whatever you'd like. Personally, I just tend to use Sublime Text. And you can find that online if you really wanted to. I'll Google uh, Sublime Text. Okay, I, I just simply Googled Sublime Text and you go to the website sublimetext.com. You can download it for Windows or whatever operating system you really want and uh, get a text editor that you enjoy. But that's it. You know, we've been talking for a long time in this video and we covered just some fundamental ideas. But again, hovering over, selecting all this text, we can copy this and just slap it into that little submission box down below. Control V, I'll use that keyboard hotkey to paste and we can click submit flag and says, hey, you, you solved that challenge correctly again. So that's it. That is the simple obedient cat challenge in Pico CTF that I know, man, for, for some others that kind of watch my videos, you know, that was very fundamental and we took like, what, 20 minutes to go through all that? But hey, uh, I do want to treat this as a bare bones beginner video series and uh, I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy that style and that structure. If you are just finding my channel now or you're just kind of getting interested in this sort of thing, then... Pico CTF is a great way to practice and play. I hope to showcase some other challenges here, but um, I hope that kind of got your feet wet in Linux, in the web shell, and uh, maybe understanding more of kind of what the files look like and the file systems on Windows, whether, oh, I, I gotta open this file up in Notepad because it doesn't have a file extension or whatever. But anyway, I hope it was fun, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please do some of those YouTube algorithm things. I'd love if you could like the video, comment, subscribe, anything. And uh, this was a lot of fun. I think that can, uh, that can wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Oh, 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 oh,